okay, um, above. Close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't see the detail from far away. No, no, I didn't know. This is where we want to zoom in, get it a little tighter. You know, when he actually starts doing the mud, you're going to get his hands. Watch, watch what I do here. I'm going to get his, like his hands are right in that joint. You're going to see me let him mud that. That's a close up. And then you'll back back out slowly and just kind of get an overview there. But you got to get both. So I just kick your leg back a little, just, just a little. There you go. No, go ahead. And you're going to want to just kind of slide some of it on there to get a good stick. Now it's on there on both sides of pre start. And then you can kind of just start slapping it on. Usually I make a little thin patty so it can bridge this gap real nice. Slap By making that patty in your hand and putting it on, you've got a layer. And it just, it bridges the gaps. Now let's talk about when you place that mud, what we're wanting you to do is to feather it in to where it looks, if it looks queer. Yeah, like see how this has got a bulge right here? Uh -huh. You're going to want to lose that bulge just by feathering it. See what I mean? Kind of feathering it to the other. Either that, you got two options. Either you grind it or you mud it. And I prefer the mudding. It's quick, it's easy. See that smear coat that he's talking about now? You don't necessarily have to do it on the small joints. But he's saying it's a better bond, which it's true. I'm looking at it in another aspect that if I've got a wide vertical gap that I'm trying to do that's six inches apart, the smearing on and letting it sit for about a minute and then engaging it, it's going to make it hold better. And it's kind of nice if you can try to crisp up your joints and stuff like that where they seem to get a style that's less grinding later on too. Well, if you've got a bucket of water and you clean your hands just like you do your trial and you run them back on there, you'll lay a lot of that fiber down and you won't be engaging it again. It, 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 it's, it's, it's okay, I think we'll be... We're just going to do it yeah, like we did that. Or you can just texture over it. Well, it depends on the rock that you're dealing with, actually. A lot of times... Or it's actually getting to where you can't really move. Uh, it depends on the temperature. Yeah, Today right. it's going to be an hour, maybe two. It's colder. Yeah. As you start getting in, in 90, it's going off in five, ten minutes. Honest to God. Again, temperature. Yeah, but on a hot day. A few minutes. You, we keep a guy with a drill in the summertime just keeping it moving. If you keep it moving, then you can extend it. If you just let it sit there, five, ten minutes, it's hard. Oh yeah, you can still. If it gets to where you can't stick your drill in it, you ain't shaking up. Watch what I'm going to do here. See this elevation change? I'm just going to feather that in a little. Just going to touch it up. Now, if you want a, na a 90, you know how you get that crisp, like see that edge, how it's crisp? I'm going to reduce the amount of grinding. We take one mil plastic or shrink wrap, lay it over here, work out the air bubbles, it's smooth. So there's a lot of ways of looking at this as far as texture. With this rough or rock though, our texture mud, you wouldn't have to grind this if you didn't want to. You can just put the texture mud right over it. There's a lot of ways, and we're trying to show you the different aspects of, of procedure. There is not, it depends on what you're making. There's no retampering of this. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Adding more acrylic. To oh, of course, of course, of course. If it starts going off on you too fast. Yeah, keeping it in motion.